This was my reaction once I saw the first few images coming out of Dali 2. The results are truly stunning. It's remarkable to see these images coming out of an AI system that pretty much does everything on its own. As much as I would like to take credit for these images, the only input from my side was just a few descriptive text prompts. Let's have a closer look. A few weeks ago, I tested out Midjourney, another AI image generation tool. Midjourney is very capable, but in my opinion, Dali 2 is on a whole other level. Composition, lighting, colors, styles, the user experience, everything is spot on. There are times, of course, where the system spits out a few duds, but in most cases, the images are really, really good. It's the perfect exploration slash brainstorming tool. And most importantly, Dali is art directable. With Midjourney, I had a tough time trying to tame the AI and steer it a specific direction. But with Dali 2, everything is easily adjustable. In my testing, I could art direct the lighting, composition, and subject matter without much effort. The system was great at decoding the text prompts and making valid changes to the images. Let me show you what I mean. This is one of the first few text prompts I tried with Dali 2. It's an image I've been working in my head for a while now, but haven't really started working on it because, <laughs> you know, procrastination. Anyway, because I already have a specific visual in mind, I want to see how close I could get to that with Dali. The final illustration will be in 3D and the plan is to have it as realistic as possible, so that's why you see me using the prompt high quality photo. Here's the first collection of images I got back. Not bad at all. Of course, there are issues with the faces of the characters, but that's not really important. I'm more interested in exploring the overall qualities of the image, like the lighting, the mood, and composition. And I must say, Delhi is very, very close. Specifically, the lighting and mood of these images is close to what I had in mind. But in my version, I thought of the character sitting on the edge of the bed and the camera being much lower to the ground. So I decided to adjust the prompt a tiny bit, just to see if I could improve things. And this is what I got back. That is more like it. The fourth image is a bit off, but all of the three are nailing the look. The set dressing is not the most ideal, but it gets the point across. It's a bedroom setting. For the final image, I have some specific furniture in mind, so what I see here is not something I would actually use, but still, it's amazing to see how good the images are overall. The angle, the way the light interacts with the character, the mood, it's all there. Especially the first and second image are spot on. Another thing I find interesting is AI's choice to tilt the head of the character downwards. It's brilliant, and it's something I also wanted to experiment with. Seeing these great results gave me the confidence needed to try out a slightly modified prompt. The image in my head has the light source coming from the right side of the frame, so I decided to see if Dali would actually follow through. And to my surprise, it did. These two images are gorgeous. I love how the light hits the character and defines his silhouette. The play between the dark and light areas, it's all perfect. The clothes is something that could be worked on a little bit more, but I'm sure that if I adjusted the prompt to include that detail, Dali would try to implement that change as well. And this is the amazing power of a really capable AI tool. In just a matter of seconds, I have a nice exploration in colors, composition, and lighting. Something that would have taken a long time to do without such a tool. Don't get me wrong, there's still a ton of work left. There's modeling, lighting, rendering, and way more experimentation needed. But having this nice exploration so early in the project's life is extremely helpful. After seeing how art directable Dali is, I decided to see how far I could push it. So the prompt for the next set of images was even more specific. Aside from the general direction of having a female character leaning against a metal door, I wanted the lighting to be harsh and with strong shadows from trees covering the character's face. 
and once more I was blown away by the results. Pretty much everything in the images is impressive. The pose of the character, the composition, the lighting, the colors, it's insane how good everything is. And there's a healthy amount of variety between the images. I don't know, it might just be me, but I find this super impressive. I want to adjust the prompt a little bit more just to see if Dali would make the proper adjustments. So this time I asked for a blonde character with a ponytail. From my earlier tries, I knew that I would probably get the blonde character, but I wasn't so sure about the ponytail part. And it looks like in this occasion, it was a bit confused. Two of the characters kinda have a ponytail, but I would have expected a slightly different look. But I'm definitely nitpicking here. My text prompt could be the issue here, but whatever the case may be, the images are still beautiful. Not everything is a banger, but in a span of a minute or two, I got some really awesome images I could use as reference. My next prompt is another great example of how art directable Dali is. On my first attempt, I've asked Dali for an image of a kid playing retro video games in a room full of 80s posters. My prompt is a bit vague on the composition side and the lighting, but Dali still did great. The posters on the wall are not the best looking, but I'm blown away by the lighting. I have no clue how they managed to pull this off, but it's insane how great it is. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Once I start adjusting the prompt and get more specific with the details, the results just go to the next level. Now that the system has a better description of the scene, it does a wonderful job visualizing it. The AI correctly lit the character and the environment. The majority of the light comes from the TV, and as a result we get these nice strong shadows setting a perfect mood for the images. This second set of images is closer to what I had in mind as I was typing the first prompt. On the third adjustment I try to go more into detail about the set dressing. Even though Dali didn't follow things to a T, it still spit out some beautiful images. The rug is not exactly what I was looking for, and the TV in some of the images is not an old one, but despite that, all four images have some great qualities. And here's a few more with the prompt slightly adjusted. Dali is not only good for photoreal images, it can also produce some amazing 2D artwork. Here's an otter reading a book. And an otter reading a book in the forest as the light peeks through the leaves. Or how about an otter reading a book while wearing a scarf and sitting on top of a pile of books. Another interesting thing is the impact a style request can have on the final image. For example, here I'm asking for a realistic image of a tiny house on top of a flower. Dali is focused a little bit too much on the realism of things, and as a result, the images are not pushing things to the area I would have liked. The AI seems to interpret things in a very logical way. You wouldn't really see a tiny house on top of a flower in real life, so the AI is trying to figure out a realistic way of interpreting the prompt. And because of that, the images are a bit banal. But once I get rid of the high quality photo prompt and replace it with the term digital art, the results are stunning. I love the fact that Dali decided to use a heavy background blur in three out of the four images. It's how things would actually look if we shot a close up of a small object with a real camera. Even though the majority of the images look great, it's obvious that the AI has some problems figuring out the correct placement of things. So the flower sometimes is on top of the house instead of the other way around, and in one occasion where the placement is correct, the flower looks more like a tree. I've seen this issue with Midjourney as well. For some reason the AI gets confused and doesn't know which part goes where. I don't understand exactly why that happens, but I guess things that are very obvious for a human being can be somewhat challenging for an AI. Seeing this series of cute images made me want to turn the cute factor up to 11. So here's a bunch of tiny houses, lollipops, and candy colored skies. Some of the images are a little bit rough around the edges and lack some necessary detail, but they're perfect as initial sketches. 
I can easily visualize how I could improve things if I built everything from scratch. And since we're on the subject of the AI getting confused, here's another prompt that did a number on DALI. Even though in my mind the terms robot and dog are completely separate, the AI just went ahead and made everything into a dog. So we have a dog robot holding a dog. <laughs> it's kinda hilarious if you think about it. These happy accidents also led to one of my favorite images in the series. Here's the prompt I used, and here's the images I got back. The one image I love from this series is this one here. You can create a whole story from this single image. When I look at this illustration, I imagine a human at some point in the future trying to cheer up his depressed robot. His solution is to get him a robot dog to keep him company while he's away at work. What we're seeing here is the first time the depressed robot meets its new friend. I think by now it's quite obvious that I'm a big fan of DALI 2. It's an awesome brainstorming tool. But there's also another thing I love and I haven't mentioned yet, and that has to do with the overall user experience. Midjourney relies on Discord for all its interactions and it's a really clunky way of doing things. You're bombarded with other users' images and you're constantly having to scroll around to find the ones you made. And on top of that, the servers can be a bit slow at times. DALI is the exact opposite. Everything is done through the website, where you can concentrate on your own images. The text field also autofills with a last prompt used, so you can quickly iterate and find the best set of images. Finally, other actions like using your own images or replacing a part you don't like are very easy to do. I feel that DALI 2 is a much more refined product, but that doesn't mean that Midjourney is bad. Midjourney is great for very abstract text prompts like Endless Sadness or a Corridor of Dreams, but when it comes to controlling the output, it's not that easy. DALI on the other hand feels more like the perfect tool for an art director. You can easily control the outcome and quickly iterate on ideas. The one complaint I have for DALI is the history functionality. It only holds a tiny collection of images before everything is erased. The only way to save them is by holding them into your collection. Midjourney on the other hand just saves everything automatically, which is very helpful. Anyway, I think that about covers things. I'm gonna leave you with some more images created with DALI, so make sure to stay until the end. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.